In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Today, we are told the story of when Christ raised a young man from the dead. There was a man who had died. He had left his mother. The mother's husband had also died previously, we know, because the scriptures declare that she was a widow. And so now she was bereft of husband and son. And we gather it was her only child. And so Christ, when he saw her, he had compassion upon this woman. And having compassion upon her, and being Christ, he was able to say to this young man who had died, Young man, arise. Arise from the dead. This is God's power. God's power over nature. We hear this story year after year, decade upon decade, and yet it still does not strike us deeply enough the awe, the, the shock that comes upon witnessing God's power displayed before our eyes. And so we become numb to it. It becomes something passe. It becomes something, oh, of course, yes, this is something that God can do. And we chalk it up to just that which God does. And then we live our lives as if the supernatural has no direct bearing on our lives. And yet we see the reaction that the crowd has who witnessed this. It says, then fear came upon all. I don't know if anyone has seen videos even of, of just common magicians. Sometimes you see a common magician, a person who does sleight of hand. And they'll do a trick in front of someone, and they'll, they're a professional at it. And, and they somehow make it look like they're able to levitate off the ground. And when you see the person witness this, the person is shocked. Sometimes they'll almost fall on the ground, and they'll run around in circles, and they'll say, How can this person levitate? And this is just common trick on the eyes. Imagine to be in the presence of God displaying His power right before you and overturning the course of nature. Nature just, just entering headlong into death at all moments and God saying, nope, come on out of there. The person that you have, beloved, who you were weeping for one moment, now alive. The awesomeness of God must always stay close to our mind and to our heart. Because if we do not fear God, if His greatness does not impress itself upon our conscience, upon our thinking, then a thousand and one, a million and one other things will come into our mind and cause us to treat them as God. To treat them as the power. 
to treat them as the one we must bow to. But we bow to the Lord over nature. The Lord who is triumphant over death. We have to think it through so that we can ask ourselves at each moment of our thinking, each thought. Paul says each thought we are to take captive for Christ. Our mind is like a, is like a freeway. And thoughts and feelings are constantly flowing through at any given moment from the moment we wake up to the time that we drift off to sleep. Our minds are filled with thoughts, impressions, feelings, opinions, beliefs, assumptions, name it. And unless, in all sincerity, we take each of those thoughts captive, hold them in the light of God's word, our life will incrementally be bound up with error. And as we celebrate the fathers of the Seventh Ecumenical Council today, we find that the church proclaims that truth is necessary. It is necessary, therefore, to meet error with truth. Errors in thinking create problems for living. And so we have to take each thought captive to the reality of the greatness of God as revealed in His Word and taught in His church. Just as when we're driving down the freeway, how does a police officer check the speed of a car? By a radar, right? A radar gun, which uses light. And the light bouncing off of the moving vehicle, I'm not a scientist in this. Someone can correct my science here. But my rudimentary understanding is that light from the radar gun or light from the car is receive, uh, bouncing off of the car is received by this radar. And in doing so, it, it measures the speed of the car using light. Now, God's word is also a light. And so just as every car that passes by that radar is measured, Similarly, our thoughts should have a radar. And that radar is God's word. God's word is a light unto my feet. A lamp unto my paths. So that when we walk, and I don't mean walk with our feet, I mean when we walk with our mind, which means thought by thought by thought. The act of thinking that we're always engaged in has to be, must be measured by the light of God's word. So that each thought gets checked. Each thought gets checked. Are you true? Are you right? Are you love? Are you mercy? Each thought. There is no welcome thought if it is not true. Many of us, we live and our thoughts are just, they have a life of their own. And in many ways, our thoughts do have a life of, our own, uh, of their own. They have their own momentum, they have their own habits. 
But we cannot let these thoughts like, like gangs gather power in the citadels of our mind. And so we use God's word like a radar, like a lamp, like a laser, like a spotlight to shine on each thought, each word, so that at all moments our thoughts become, through this training, only God's thoughts. That we think God's thoughts after Him so that our minds become godly. It's the only way. Otherwise, church is just a club. Church is not a club, though. We have to ask, why are we here? Why are we here? Do we have nothing better to do on a Sunday morning? Could we not rather sleep in and rest? And so this becomes a practical experiment for us. What is the thought that motivates the Christian to be in church? Which comes from the other reading today from Hebrews. When St. Paul warns us, do not be carried about with various and strange doctrines, teachings, ideas, opinions. Carried about. We're constantly being carried about by thoughts, words, and opinions from the world that we receive. Whether through the radio, through the internet, through the television, through our phones. Opinion upon opinion upon opinion. Man's opinion that changes at one week is this and another week it's this. And each week they swear by it. And they say, let me lead you by the nose. Because strange ideas carry us about unless we're anchored in God's word. And so Paul says, do not be carried about with various and strange teachings, doctrines, opinions, ideas, attitudes. And then he talks about how Christ, and remember I, I raised the question of why do we come to church? Here is why. Jesus, well I could stop there. That's why we come to church. We don't come to church for ourselves. We don't give to the church for ourselves. We don't live our life around the church for ourselves. It's for Jesus. Paul says, Jesus, that he might sanctify the people, purify the people, make the people holy, cleanse the people, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood. Blood. That's why St. Paul says he suffered outside the gate. Because remember, when Christ was crucified, he was outside the gate of Jerusalem. And it was by his blood that we have been cleansed. So the question is, when we ask, why are we here? What is the thought that immediately comes up? Because Paul provides the true thought in the word of God here. It is the bloody body of Jesus Christ on the tree. That's why we're here. We are blood bought human beings. We are bought by the blood of the lamb that was poured out. A bloody, a bloody carcass of Christ. Hanging on a cross. To cleanse us by his blood. 
there is no other reason to be at church than because we are responding to the call that comes through His blood. Are you a blood-bought human being? That's why we come to church. That's why we are here. And it is our ability to maintain this to the close surface of our minds, the memory of this at the very least, even better would be the sense of this, that we have been bought by the blood of Christ that then motivates our thoughts and actions. And then, like the spotlight, like the radar, we ask ourselves, in the presence of every thought and emotion that arises, what standing do you have, O thought? O emotion, what standing do you have in relation to the blood of Christ? If that thought doesn't have any bearing or relation, if that thought is not cleansed by the blood of Christ, cast it out like an unclean spirit. You have no business here, thought. Arrest it, taking captive every thought. In the name of Jesus Christ. And through that we cleanse our mind. We cleanse our emotions. We cleanse our heart. If a fear arises, oh fear, what bearing do you have? What relation do you have to the blood of Christ? If an anger arises, oh anger, what bearing, what relation do you have to the blood of Christ. If you're listening to the radio. And the radio host is saying something. Everything he says. What bearing do you have. To the word of God. And to the blood of Christ. If you're listening to the TV. And the anchor man is talking about. X or Y. What relation. O oh anchor man message. Do you have. To the blood of of Christ. If you're watching a movie, a television show, what bearing do you have with the blood of Christ? Because I am a blood-bought person. My life is not my own. And our life in Christ is a constant increase in the sense that we are not our own. <clears throat> there is no other message. If we come to church with the attitude that we are our own, then we stand false. If we give to the church with the attitude that we give for ourselves and not for God, then we are false. If the church service goes on so long and we think, oh, what about my time? If we think that our time is our own, it is false. Our very core being is God's possession. You are God's possession. And thank God you are God's possession. Because what better hands to be in than to be in the hands of the Lord who is greater than death. The one who seeks you out with his mercy. The one who pursues you with his grace. <clears throat> the one that washes you in his blood, cleanses you, and holds you before his face, a child of God, 
to invite you into his kingdom of everlasting righteousness, everlasting peace, and everlasting joy. So take every thought captive so that the inside of your mind, the inside of your heart matches what God's word says. And so that the inside matches the outside. We wash our face. Do we wash the face of our soul? We wash our hands. Do we wash the hands of our soul? We wash our feet. Do we wash the feet of our soul? How do I wash it, Father? How do I cleanse it, Father? I want my thoughts to be like God's thoughts. I don't want the world to take domination over me anymore. Wash it in the blood of the Lamb, taking every thought captive. And if it is not true according to the Word of God as preserved and taught in the church, then just dump it. Disagree with it. Say, you might sound convincing, O thought, but I know that God's Word says something different. And I will listen to God and not even to my own self. I will listen to God first. Because I am blood bought or I am nothing. To the glory of Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus Christ.